Hey everybody, welcome to our tutorial on importing external 3D motions uh, into Crazy Talk Animator 2. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do that. Uh, taking a free uh, 3D motion from the web, uh, converting it in 3D Exchange, and then importing it to our character in Crazy Talk Animator 2. Uh, so as you can recall, we already had a tutorial on importing eye motions uh, to Crazy Talk Animator 2. So uh, I'm an eye clone right now, so for example, if I use my uh, this uh, groove motion here from my uh, Street Dance Popping Pack, you can see I can apply it to this character here. Uh, this character is actually from one of our developers, uh, Seligon. You can see it kind of goes into that little uh, dance groove right there. So that's the uh, 3D motion you can see on uh, this character right here. Now, if we just uh, go back and uh, drag that into our Crazy Talk Animator, let's do the same thing. So let's grab that from our uh, Content Manager, go to Crazy Talk Animator, and we can uh, apply it directly to uh, Sol here in the Crazy Talk Animator. And that is a 3D motion, so uh, as you can may be able to recall, he can do perform that motion from uh, a number of different angles. So if I, for example, uh, change him to this uh, uh, 45 degree angle here, he can do the same thing. Or we can also uh, change him to the uh, 90 degree angle, just like this. And so that's how cool it is uh, to, you, you can basically take any eye motion uh, from iClone and apply it to your character in Crazy Talk Animator. Uh, so that for this example, I'm going to show you how you can take any motion you can find on any site in the web uh, and you can uh, do the same thing with that. Um, so this is a little, little bit more complicated than the eye motion. Uh, so let's get right into it. Let's go to our browser first and we want to uh, start off, well, we're at Turbo Squid here. It's not really known for motions, but we can find some here. I'm going to search for uh, Hip Hop Dance and we'll see what uh, that comes up with. Um, so you can see Hip Hop Dance, we have a number of motions here. Uh, you can preview them. Uh, I'm just going to choose this free one for now, because um, free is always the best. So we'll just click that, and you can see that this is a uh, hip-hop dance, and we can get a little uh, preview of this uh, dance, what it's going to look like. You can see it's a little bit fast here, but essentially that's the uh, motion that we're going to import into Crazy Talk Animator 2. So let's go ahead and download this. Uh, I've got a free download here on the top, and then we can just uh, basically select it, and we can just download it right away. And uh, once this is finished downloading, we'll just uh, extract it. And uh, there we go. There it is in our Google Chrome. So we'll just go ahead and uh, open. And we have this right here, this R&B dance. Let's just extract this to our uh, desktop. We'll go ahead and just copy it to our desktop right away here. Press OK. And then we should have an R&B dance on our desktop. So let's go ahead and close this down. Let's go to our uh, desktop here. You can see there it is, rbdance21.fbx. So I have this as an FBX file. So what I want to do is I want to drag this into our uh, 3D Exchange now. 3D Exchange is a conversion program that converts um, external motions and models uh, for use in iClone and in this case, Crazy Talk Animator 2. So let's go ahead and click and drag that. And uh, I'm going to load up my uh, 3D Exchange. There we go. And... Um, drag that in. Now here, uh, since we're only importing motion, uh, we don't really have to worry about any material issues or any smooth curves. We just have to make sure that uh, import animation uh, is checked off. And we'll go OK. And this will import in some weird uh, stick looking dude here. Um, now this is the actual um, bone for the uh, the bone data for the motion. Now what I want to do is go ahead and convert this to uh, iClone format. So you can see now if I just select the motion in my motion library here in the animation section, I can press play and you can see this is the motion that we're going to be importing. That little stick there is, is the root uh, and this is where the character is going to be moving. Uh, kind of just dancing around doing a whole 3D move and then back to the uh, beginning point. So that's the motion that we're going to be importing. So let's go ahead and uh, go down here and we want to select convert to non-standard. Now what this will do is this will make this motion compatible with all of iClone's uh, rigs, and in this case, uh, Crazy Talk Animator rigs as well. So I happen to know that this is a, uh, a rig coming from, or this is a motion coming from 3ds Max. So we have presets up here. If I just select 3ds Max biped, you can see that all of my bones will be mapped. So basically you can see that everything is uh, good to go, and we have a green circle here, which means we can now uh, convert this to an iClone uh, character motion. Uh, so if, if we select active, we can test this out, for example. Let's go ahead and select, uh, you know, basic run. And you can see that, uh-oh, what's happening here? We have our, his arms are kind of flailing behind uh, the body. And it looks a little bit weird. So let's go ahead and stop this. Let's go to our uh, T-pose. We need to set our T-pose uh, correctly first. So we'll preview the T-pose. And currently this doesn't really look like a T. So we can either adjust this manually by moving the bones, 
or we can just deselect the active box and we can select load T-pose. And in T-pose we have a 3ds Max biped. So we can just select that T-pose and then go open. And then boom, this is what we want exactly. So this is how our character our, or our uh, rig is going to start off. And then if we select active now, you can see that uh, the legs will spread out a little bit. Let's take a look at uh, the basic run. You can see that now it looks okay, but the legs are still a bit spread out. So let's go ahead and uh, offset that, uh, the feet here. We want to make sure that uh, oh, we're in contact uh, setup here. So let's go over here. Then we have hip offset. Let's make sure this is in a T-pose so we can get a better look at it. So we're in the T-pose now. What we need to do is kind of just make those uh, feet a little bit closer together. Maybe for spacing we can select auto. And you can see that that will automatically um, put them into the uh, recommended uh, position there. So that's what we want uh, exactly right there. If our character is leaning forward or backward, we can also adjust the uh, hip offset. If I put this to zero, for example, he'll be leaning a little bit too far back. So let's go ahead and just leave that at like minus 10 or something. Try and get it as, as straight up as possible. And then we're good to go. So what that's doing is that's kind of aligning the uh, motion data from this motion with our uh, iClone rig. So let's go ahead and now we can convert. We're done, we're done all that. That's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and convert. And we just go ahead and select OK for this. Um, we can select apply, apply to iClone to view the result. But basically this motion is as it should be. Now what I want to do is I want to save this motion uh, to iClone. Now I need to make sure that it's also in the perform editor here. So this motion here is in the perform editor. Uh, we can just uh, call this whatever we want. We can uh, name it anything. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, maybe call it, uh, we can just call it uh, Cool Dance, something like that. All right, and then just press enter and that'll uh, save. So you can see it's 668 frames long. Now what I can do here is I can go up here to uh, export to icon or I'll just press control E. So once I do that, we don't need to export the geometry because uh, it's just a stick figure. Uh, so we'll just deselect that. But we do need to select export animation. And here we can select the default destination, which would be the custom motion folder within iClone, which I can show you later. Or we can select other. In this case, I'll just leave it at other. And I'm going to export it to my desktop. And I'm going to press OK. And that's just going to export that motion to my desktop. So now we have an iMotion um, that's correctly um, aligned to our uh, default iClone rig. So I'm just going to minimize this for now, go back to our desktop. And there you can see we have Cool Dance. Now that's our motion. That's the FBX. That's basically the uh, universal version, and that's the version that's uh, converted for use with iClone. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I drag this into iClone. So let's go ahead into uh, iClone here. There we are. And we'll just apply this to our uh, character. And you can see that uh, this is the result right here. And we have this uh, guy doing his cool R&B dance. And that's how easy it is to bring the motions uh, into iClone with the uh, raw data. And if you find that maybe this guy's shoulders are a little bit too high at the first point, you can select Edit Motion Layer. You can select the shoulders and mirror that and just uh, bring that down. So he's kind of starting at a more natural uh, pose right there and then play it back. Maybe that looks a little bit, uh, a little bit more natural. He's not kind of arching his shoulders up so much. Now, if we wanted to uh, save that modified motion, we can press F3, go into our timeline, and we can go into our uh, motion track here. And you can see we have uh, that motion clip right there. That should be 60 something, 600 something odd frames long. And we'll select click clip. And we can just uh, click and drag in the collect clip track and right click. And then we can go add motion plus to 3D exchange. We can add motion to the library. Um, it doesn't really matter. In this case, what I'm just gonna do is select add motion to library. And that's gonna save as a 3D motion. Now we can save this to any folder we want. Let's just go ahead and save it to the desktop again. We'll just call it Cool Dance 2 um, and press save. Now you don't have to do this um, if your original motion is okay. I just thought the shoulders were a little bit high. You won't re really be able to notice that in Crazy Talk Animator 2. But I just wanted to create a second version just to show you if you wanted to modify it in iClone. Uh, you can actually do that and then you can export it into Crazy Talk Animator 2. But both versions are actually going to be okay. So let's go ahead back to our uh, desktop here. And now you can see we have Cool Dance 2. This is the uh, iClone motion that I saved right here. Let's go ahead and drag this into uh, Crazy Talk Animator now. So it's an iMotion now. Should be able to be used in uh, Crazy Talk Animator. Let's go ahead and just apply that over the top one. Now you can see basically our character, Saul, doing the, doing the hip hop dance. 
And you can see he's fully compatible. This character has a, um, all eight angles. So you can see the uh, motion from all different angles. Now, if you wanted to maybe modify a couple things in this, let's say, for example, um, if we go down to about uh, here, um, maybe uh, when he's kind of moving his uh, leg like that, let's go. And so basically, when he's moving around like this, if you wanted to like modify anything, let's say for example this part, it's kind of a little bit jittery. If uh, I play this back, you can see that the right leg is kind of just jittering. And if we wanted to avoid that, there's a, there's a couple of things we could do. Um, probably the best thing to do would be just to modify the motion slightly using the 3D motion editor. So let's press F3 and go into the timeline. I have my character selected. And let's use this uh, object related track. We can close down our project track and just open up the 3D motion track for Saul. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit on our timeline. Here we are, right here. So this is about where that uh, jittering is taking place. If I go frame by frame, you can see we're getting a little bit of jittering right there in those few frames. So maybe about right here, let's go ahead and add a keyframe. Uh, maybe about up there, about there maybe. We just need to double click in the 3D motion layer track and that will create a keyframe. And in addition, that will also bring up the 3D motion key editor on the right hand side here. So once we do that, we uh, have our keyframe there. Let's just double click that. And maybe this point right here where he's kind of um, jittering his leg, uh, we can go ahead and just uh, have our character zoom in on our uh, character rig over here. And let's just go ahead and select his calf. Now we need to make sure we unlock his uh, feet so his feet won't be uh, for that particular leg. Uh, press the E hotkey to rotate and move that down. Something like that might be a little bit more suitable. And let's see what happens. So there we go. We're kind of, uh, we got rid of that jittering. Now we're just kind of taking a step. And then at this point over here, maybe we can go ahead and reset that back to the original motion clip data. And that'll make sure that uh, nothing um, is jittering any longer. So there we have that uh, flawless step right there. Now, one other thing you may have noticed if you were quick enough is we can just go back to the beginning here. Um, when he's doing his dance, you can see he's kind of going ahead, just moving his arm around. Now, at this point here, he kind of moves his hand through his head, which is kind of uh, physically impossible. You can see that right there. So maybe if we just wanted to uh, avoid that situation where his hand's kind of going through his head, we can just maybe, uh, there you go, it's coming back out through his mouth as well. So me at this point here, before he goes uh, through his head right there, let's just go ahead and add a keyframe there. And we'll do this uh, motion uh, key editor uh, trick it one more time. We'll just select his uh, forearm and we'll move that forearm. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to this frame actually, go ahead to this frame. And then we'll just go ahead and move that forearm a little bit out. There we go, just so it's not um, going through his head there. And there you go, so now we have this. And maybe at this point, it needs to be out a little bit further as well. It's kind of going through his hair there. Uh, in addition to this, there's another thing you can do, which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, and there we go. And then maybe at this point, just refresh it back to the original uh, motion clip data. So we should be able to, uh, there we go. Instead of going through his head, he's kind of just, uh, you know, um, going to the side there a little bit. And that's a little bit better. All right, so that's some uh, simple 3D motion key editing there. Now, the other way to fix that motion that I just, uh, the, the arm motion that I just edited, is if I don't want to change the actual motion, I just want to change the layers, I can actually just, uh, we'll go ahead and select all of these keys here, and I'm just going to delete all those uh, those keyframes. So let's go ahead and do this one more time. This time we're going to be uh, messing with the layers. So you can see at this point, he's kind of going, um, you know, through his head right there. I'm going to make it so that his uh, arm is continually in front of his face. So to do this, we need to use the uh, layer editor down here. Let's select the uh, layer editor. And the layer editor is actually a 2D motion editing tool. So let's go ahead and close down our 3D motion track, open our 2D motion track, and you can see that we have the uh, layer track available right there. Let's just go ahead and at this point, what I want to do is I want to make sure that my hand, I select my hand on the little dummy here to the right, is in front of my head and my forearm is in front of my head as well. And you can see that that uh, layer key um, um, goes in the timeline right there. 
Now you can see that, oh, it's kind of still behind his face, but the rest of it will be okay. So maybe at this point, since it's just basically, uh, even though we adjusted the layer, the arm is uh, physically too far behind his uh, head to kind of appear up at front. So let's go ahead and uh, right at that point, we'll go into our uh, select our character here. Whoops, we can close down the layer editor first. And we need to do a little bit of that uh, 3D motion editing as well. And we'll just select that forearm, move that a little bit uh, forward. I think is this, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in a little bit closer. You can see that the actual arm is behind the head, so there's no way it can really appear in front of it. Uh, we can just go ahead and kind of uh, swing that out a little bit until it's, there we go. That should be, oh, maybe a little bit to the side. If it's physically too far behind, it won't really matter because it'll just be uh, the layer, the uh, physical position will overtake, will take priority over the layer. So you can see, let's test this out. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, so then we're good to go. And here at this point, we can just uh, go back to our uh, layer editor. Oh, we can actually just uh, also reset our arm um, right here um, and open our 3D motion track. We have our two keyframes right there. Make sure that we uh, still maintain that. Uh, yep, we're good to go. And maybe at this point here as well, we can also go to our uh, layer tool. And then we can go ahead and uh, reset that back to normal simply by pressing this uh, release button here. And you can see that those uh, that layer um, adjustment only lasts from this frame to that frame. So let's go ahead and make sure that that looks okay. All right, there you go. So if you don't want to adjust the actual position, um, you know, too much uh, of your uh, of your uh, character's limbs. You can also use a combination of, of layer tools as well. Um, so this one, his hand is in front of his face. The one that we previously did, his hand was to the side. So if you don't want to, you know, uh, mess that up, you can go ahead and uh, use it this way. Um, so basically, that's it. Uh, that's uh, you can uh, kind of a number of different ways you can refine your motion. Um, and I wanted to mention as well, you can go to uh, edit, and you can go to uh, whoops. We need to have our character selected first. Let's close down the. Uh, layer editor here. We need to go up to uh, edit and we can select affected by 3D motion and you should be familiar with this stuff from our uh, iMotion tutorial. You can select uh, whether or not to uh, um, adjust the layer order to have uh, Crazy Talk Animator calculate that layer order. You can uh, adjust whether or not you want to have sprite replacement and the perspective strength as well. So if I'm playing back uh, at this point, you, you saw that you saw the playback already. If I increase the perspective strength to something like 5, we'll go ahead and press OK. And you can see now that if I uh, play back, there should be much more of a 3D effect. And he kind of seems to go a lot further back into the distance there. Still doing his uh, pretty cool dance. And especially when he comes forward, you can really see that uh, feeling of depth from the motion there. All right, so then we have uh, we have that all set up. Let's go ahead and with press F3, go into our timeline. And we can save this as a 3D motion clip as well. So let's go ahead and select Collect Clip. And uh, we need to select the duration of our uh, um, animation here and right click that similar to iClone and we can select export 3d motion since this is a 3d motion we'll go select and head and select that and that'll export to our custom folder let's just call this a uh, cool dance cta and it'll save as a ct 3d motion file and we'll go ahead and press save and then we have our motion saved so let's go ahead back to frame one let's uh bring in another character let's give Saul a friend here we can bring in uh Emma right here, bring in Emma right beside Saul. And once Emma is applied to our scene, we can go ahead and uh, drag that animation to her. Let's get them at relatively the same height here. And animation, and where, you're, where you'll find your animation is in the uh, custom tab right here. And in motion, if you saved it as a 3D motion, you can see that uh, we have Cool Dance CTA with a 3D icon indicator in the top. We can just click and drag that onto uh, Emma. And now we have a dance troupe that dancing together in unison. Um, this 3D motion that we took uh, from TurboSquid from an external 3D source, uh, free on the internet, and applied it to our 2D characters in Crazy Talk Animator 2. So that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, you can check out our forums or email me, developer at religion.com. Uh, so thanks for watching, and hopefully you, in, uh, you can find some cool 3D motions to apply to your Crazy Talk Animator characters as well.